This week on Awesome Cast, the Big Goog is looking out for you. We talk about them pushing around uh, some Office subscribers, Windows 10 getting pushy with their apps, if this, then that, an alarm clock I probably won't destroy, and so much more. Awesome Cast. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for AwesomeCast271 right here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk tech, get geeky with you. With me on the couch is John Chichilla. Hey, how's it going? Hey, so let's get into it. We'll check out everything else at, at uh, AwesomeCast.net for this and our, our interviews, our awesome chats we've been having. Uh, have, hap- having? Yes. Having. 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 Happening, a happening. It is a happening. <laughs> uh, anyways, <laughs> but you can check out. Uh, last week, I actually had a great conversation uh, with Harmony from iBoard Interactive, doing some cool stuff. And today, I just had an interview with uh, with uh, Carl Chabini from uh, from uh, PC TV. Yes, the Public Access Television Network here in the Pittsburgh area. I uh, had some great discussions uh, with him about uh, public access, what they're doing. Uh, think of the uh, access of public access uh, studio and equipment as better ways for you to make your YouTube videos. Uh, you can find out why. That'll be up this Thursday as of this recording and uh, so much more. Please go check that out, awesomecast.net. Subscribe to us on YouTube. We're one we're one subscriber away from 100 on our, awesome, our AwesomeCast YouTube channel. Please, uh, please somebody go over there and subscribe. Put us over the top. Hit us the three digits, and I think I think we can do something. I, I, I don't. We have a vanity URL, but I think we get access to some other features on YouTube or something like that. Uh, but please also subscribe on all the other places where you can find us on YouTube, on iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, and uh, iHeartRadio uh, for both the Awesome Chat and the Awesome Cast. Uh, so please um, also drop us a line on the uh, social media, Twitter, Facebook. We have a Facebook group. You guys can converse with us as well, and. And uh, also check out a Patreon at patreon.com slash awesome cast uh, where we have uh, some some great supporters already uh, behind us and sharing the love over there. Uh, our friends, uh, including Mike Fedor of the Fedor Show. I think that's at F- Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter, as well as our free at, our friends at Thistle Sea Business Development and Cranberry Township, PA. You can check them out on Twitter at Thistle Sea. And you can become a patron as well. I uh, just even giving a little pennies to the show is much appreciated. And uh, these two executive producers on the show are given $5 per episode here uh, after four weeks. We're sending them business cards to let them tell the other people that they're an ex- executive producer for the Awesome Cast. And we thank them very much for their support. So let's get into it with our awesome things of the week chilla what do you got for me this week so i have the i'm guessing it's pronounced betty the betty smartphone alarm clock okay. um so unlike any of the other smartphone alarm clocks or or tablet alarm clocks that you may have um that have some kind of port on them that you have to use a very specific either iphone or you have to use an android device that has its connector at the bottom in the center etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, this allows you to use um, it, it. It's not necessarily a dock per se. It does have. It has a 2.1 amp and a one amp port on the USB ports on the back, so you can kind of prop your phone up in a in a little tray um, and plug your device in. Where I thought this was really cool is there's a there's a supplemental um, app that works with the dock. Um, the dock is Bluetooth enabled. And part of what the app does is not only is it an alarm, there's three buttons on the device that then allow you to program what those buttons do. Um, You can have those buttons do things like call an Uber taxi, play a specific Spotify list, control the temperature on your Nest, um, or or use like a uh, Philips Hue light. So say you want to kick on the lights in the room and maybe down into the kitchen because you're going to get up and go down and get a cup of coffee every day. Um, what I think that that's the really cool part is you can kind of reach up, hit a button, and it completes a complete task, hmm. um, unlike uh, some of the other other devices. Um, it, not bad for a $100 dock, um, and it is on Kickstarter. 
Um, so you can grab it right now for $75, or actually, if you hit the 115 mark, you can actually get two. Um, it is not expected until June of next year. Um, but I liked it because it not only had the one device, it not only had a USB port for one device, but two. And I find myself putting either a watch in the phone next to the bed or an iPad in the phone next to the bed. Or maybe you have his and her, now you have his and her ports to charge your both phones at night. Um, I, I don't know. I just think it's a, it's a really cool idea. That's, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm the one that threw my phone on the floor this morning. <laughs> uh, so, so maybe this is something that, that needs to happen, uh, on my end and really kind of plays a little bit, uh, to, to what I want to be talking about. So, so what do you mean that it, 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 it does a task? So are you, you're, you're setting up stuff via the device via an app? How's that go? It's via their app. Okay. So I'm guessing they're going to get more and more integration and I'm guessing they're going to integrate with what you're going to talk about. Uh, that'd be nice. That would be really cool because think about it. Then you could string together tons of tasks. But but like I said, th- to me this is the first one that really is using outside capabilities. I haven't seen many manufacturers whether like iHome. You can do a bunch of stuff with other iHome products. You can you can their app lets you do a bunch of different things. To me, this gives you three different things that you could potentially do, um, and potentially more. Awesome. Awesome. Go check it out. They say they're on Kickstarter and uh, you just look for uh, Betty, B-E-D-D-I, Intelligent Alarm Clock. And uh, it definitely has 43 days days ago and it's way above its $25,000 goal. So that's happening if it's actually going to happen, I guess. Right. Mm-hmm. So Awesome. Go check it out. So, yeah, you mentioned you kind of alluded to a little bit of uh, what my awesome thing is. And I'm actually surprised that uh, that that you're you're not somebody that's already all over this show. Um, so, so, uh, if this, then that, the, uh, if, dot com, uh, <laughs> if you want to go check that is, you know, I F T T T dot com. Uh, but you know, the whole, like if this and that, and, and they kind of set things up as recipes. And this is something I first experimented with a tiny, tiny bit, because it was a way to get your Google glass to do a little bit more than what the capabilities of whatever apps were released for it. Uh, cause you could tie into this. And, and I think like, I, I, I think these were, I, well, I had one recipe in here. From old, yeah. If I Facebook, then I Google Glass. Uh, if I tag the photo on Facebook, get a notif- notif- If I get tagged as a, in a photo on Facebook, I would have gotten a notification from Glass right away. Um, and, and, and I, I kind of had this note uh, for a while to kind of. I'm figuring out how to kind of simplify things and remove a lot of the cruft of the day to day, especially when it comes to the podcasting and the social media and maintenance. So I'm very, very interested in just time time freeing applications you know I totally agree whether you know tweet jukebox i've been talking about over on basic sorgonomics for several months since podcast since, since i discovered it there and that's been a huge huge boon for me right and uh and, and i'm thankful to see that uh, most of my usage in tweet jukebox falls under their free tier that they're releasing here as they as they upgrade to uh <laughs> paid plans here in the next at, at the beginning of november so so i'm pleased about that just had to make slight adjustments um but but I was trying to figure out, like what other things uh, could ha- could happen with this. Now there's a couple uh, weird things I did have to do. Uh, so so again, just kind of poking a little bit with this. Uh, this worked. I was experimenting right before the show. Uh, that uh, you know I, I you know none of us are happy about how Instagram doesn't post directly to uh, Twitter that, as, or, a, as a picture. You as can, a picture, have, you can have it send a link. Right, it's a link, but but it doesn't show mm. up anywhere. Yeah. Except you know, the Hootsuite, I think, is starting to now, and some of the other ones. But like in Twitter, which is you know, frankly, most of the people that you're interacting with are going to be in a Twitter application, uh, not Tweetbot, not Hootsuite, not something else. I think uh, so. You want something compatible, right? Mm-hmm. So I I did play with that a little bit, and uh, and and let me pull up a little bit. I just did a quick picture. Uh, uh, just a quick po- podcast date picture with that app over that we've talked about in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, that puts the little graphics on there, which is, by the way, uh, newly redesigned in the last couple of weeks. I definitely recommend checking it out and see if uh, it kind of helps you uh, get into the application a little bit more. Uh, but uh, if we go over here, uh, you see there's our Twitter, and that was an Instagram photo. It's a native photo, so everybody can see it behaves just like that and we do get a short link the uh if this then that short link over here which pops voila back into the instagram if you'd like 
So, and thank you to those couple people that already uh, uh, liked the photo. There you go. And uh, it worked. It worked really well. And, and and the app. I have the app on my phone, so it will actually send me a notification when it's executed. This. So if it's like, hey, I did the Instagram. Hey, oh yeah, hey, we saw you did an Instagram. Uh, we're executing this recipe, and I know that's gone through. And then I can also see if I don't see a notification, I know there's something else. One other thing. So. You, you, you have to, like, you know, authorize, like, YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. So my problem has always been that, okay, what about I have several, 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 several accounts. So I can't sit there in one account and just, um, and just set up everything for all my podcasts, all my Twitter accounts, everything. Because you really just kind of authorize the one or you authorize the Facebook and you point it to a page or YouTube and you point it to a certain account. And you can't really dance back and forth and just have them all together. So I actually went over to, um, again, just starting with this today. Uh, I went and signed up with one for uh, Wrestling Mayhem show. And and even went in there. Reddit is something that I haven't been able to get into. Just It's not been on my purview. I, I have not, I'm not into it. Nobody on the show really frequents it all that often. I know some of you guys here on AwesomeCast do. And I know you sent me links here every once in a while. So, excuse me, i got to thing from the pizza i ate earlier <clears throat> um but uh so the couple of recipes i found were take the youtube video post it to videos on on reddit seems to make sense okay uh take 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 the articles from the website and post them to i i i went to the squared circle uh reddit and said, okay, let's just send them over there. Now, I am a little concerned because I was under the impression that um, you shouldn't just post things, like your own things to Reddit. Like, you should really be part of the community and kind of deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm concerned I might get ostracized because I'm kind of auto-posting to it. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what to do about that bit. But at least I'll be plugging some stuff into it, and we'll kind of see what happens. So at least I can experiment with that. And there's other things. Like, I wish, I wish there were other things that were a part of this. Like, Spreaker is one of the podcast uh, services that I use, and I cross-post a little bit. That's how we get on iHeartRadio for a lot of shows. So I really would have loved that there was something that I could post a, a audio file on on one podcast, and then like maybe I'll take it off of the iTunes stream and just go ahead and post it over here. Like those are the kind of other things that I would love to be able to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I wish I don't know maybe there's some kind of macro thing that I can do to to automate those a little bit more. But in the meantime, this is basically it. But in the, but at least you know I'm looking at okay, especially the guys that are doing the uh, Google Hangouts because then I have to sit and do all the work after they're done making the show mm -hmm. so that more people will be able to see it. Basically, what if they just post the video? on YouTube and it takes care of like posting it to WordPress, we're posting it to, to some other services. So even if like, okay, I didn't get to it. I really can't get to it to the next day. At least like it's out there. It's automatic. It's automatic. It's out there. I don't have to sit there and do it. So, uh, you know, I, I'm exploring this as something you need to kind of get your head into and in how it works. And, and like I said, they do a lot of hand holding a bit cause you get in here and they categorize things pretty well, like shop smarter, you know, uh, there's there's one here that was uh, they were talking about this on another podcast, I think, where they're like, you know, you could do something where uh, um, when you your phone sees that you're close to home, it'll text somebody. So I could set something up so my wife knows every time I'm within a mile of the house. The, the, I think they, they used to have a recipe where it was any time a Web page changed or was updated. Yeah. So they must have grabbed all the HTML code. <laughs> and and the and like a, a snapshot of the the website it must check in with it like once a day or something like and that and i think it's i think it's more than once a day and where i would find it interesting is like if something's if you if you're looking at a product and you're waiting for it to go on sale or like monday the apple tv is going to go on sale if you can get an update when they update the the apple tv website to instead of saying coming soon say it says buy that's where i think it also comes in handy is if you're waiting for something to happen for it to notify you. And there's interesting things like like it, it's more extra functionality that that plenty of serv services don't already have. Like I'm looking at one right now that said that that creates a uh, Craigslist daily update based on a search. 
So you're always seeing when new stuff comes up. So uh, I'm always kind of keeping an eye out. Maybe I, I maybe I want to keep an eye out for people looking for videographers. You mm-hmm. know, maybe there's some gigs out there. Most of them are crap on Craigslist, but still, you know, you never know. So I, I, I can go here and I'll, I'll type in my email and it's pretty public. I don't care. And let's do a search for videographer. So now, you know, you know, that's something that, you know, I, I can't remember last time I thought to go to Craigslist, Craigslist to do something. Now it's just an email. And we just created a thing. And, oh, it's creating, it's apparently creating an account in something. Oh, I'm not signed in. That's a problem. I signed me out somehow. But, uh, but you know, again, something that Craigslist doesn't do. Craigslist doesn't really have email updates. But now you can do that uh, in your own way. Uh, and you can create your own thing. You're like, I need a thing that with this service that does this. And you can go through their page of... Uh, just services they have and just and just kind of figure okay they have Evernote and then they have uh, Google Drive how can I put the things from Google Drive into Evernote or vice versa or something like that you know you really can kind of uh, create something out of this and I, I, it's pretty cool I think there's a lot of possibilities here they have a lot of uh, if you get the iPad iPhone version I'm sure there's probably an Android one as well uh, there's a lot of stuff that really interacts with your phone, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, it, it's a pretty cool service. It's really kind of, it's really kind of, uh, it, it, it's kind of grown and matured over the years. And I think it's uh, if you haven't yet, I think this is a pretty good time to kind of poke at this a bit. And, and here you, we were talking about kind of some of the home automation. Uh, uh, um, uh, automation uh, with that last uh, thing with the clock. Uh, set your Nest thermostat to blank. Toggle your Wemo switch. You know these are you know do recipes right and mm-hmm. uh, uh, if recipes. So again the the ifs the ifs are looking for something. If you see you know if you see me post an Instagram, it will then do something right. Like it's looking for a trigger basically. Yeah, uh, email me my new iPhone photos. So anytime I, I take more, fi- I, I have a night out taking photos. I'm taking photos of us down here. I'll get an email with them. Uh, that seems a little. I don't. I think I take too many pictures for that to be a thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know, uh, what I mean, it could be it. It could be nice if you want if 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 you have a spare phone. You know how you were talking about using a spare phone for taking taking video or something. And you just want an easy way to back that up to a different account. That's true. That's or true. Or ha- is on a different account and you want yeah. it to to email it to. Another one. I, I, I'm always impressed with their recipes, and the thing that that I fear, and I've I've feared in the past, and why I haven't gotten as into it as I should have, is I'm afraid they're going to go pay, and then I'm going to be stuck like relying on the service. Which was a concern with the tweet <laughs> jukebox, where I'm like, I, like they're like, oh yeah, we're going to pay for stuff, and I'm like, oh no, oh no, I've been <laughs> I've come to depend on this. What if? And, and like they initially they weren't they weren't very clear. Because they're like, oh, 300 tweets. I'm like, wait, 300, 300 active I tweeted out during the month or 300 tweets in a bin? Because one of those is very bad for me. Okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, but no, no, that, that worked out too. And I, I can see the power user use of it to having to pay for it. Um, but uh, but no, yeah, I, this has been around for so long. I, I don't know. what What is the story behind these guys that they're... Uh, Created in San Francisco, obviously. Um, <laughs> what isn't? What? Yeah, seriously. Privacy, jobs. I mean, uh, they're, they're doing something. Products. Wait, there's products around this. Meet Do. Control the world around the Do button. Hold on. If connects uh, apps that you love. So, so I mean, they, they again, they have to... Oh, they have extra applications now. I didn't see this before. Hold on, look at this. So, so you have your if stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So this is this is the stuff, the recipes we were talking about. But if you go to here, I'll, we have a do button, do camera, and do note. So let's say we do camera, and now we have a camera app that will send it to everything wherever you want, huh? And then you can create recipes around that. They have a do button. So what does the do button do? It, it, it's, it's just the button. This is the big button. And I set the button to set my thermostat on Nest to 70 degrees. 
so what? I only have one use for the button? They're like, oh, this is my button app. Or can you scroll left to right and there's multiple buttons? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to play with this a little bit more. So we're kind of discovering a little bit here. But uh, but that's if that's that. I F T T T T T T T. If this then that. Just spell it on your head. Dot com. Uh, and and kind of poke at it. Maybe it'll help you guys do the stuff a little. bit. If you bit. want to poke at it, you should use the button app. If you're poke at it, you should definitely download the 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 do button. It's just called the do button. Um, good, dear Lord, we make stuff in Pittsburgh. <laughs> uh but anyways uh on that note let's uh hey you know you are enjoying some slice on broadway we are almost ready to go and then so I am, somebody I, and then said, i had to i had hey. to i had to bite in i i got this much of two of two slices left there you go he's saving it for here later in the show to really get into uh right here slice on briar are good friends over there that are supporting, oops, that's a Windows key. They're supporting uh, Pittsburgh Podcast with the perfect pepperoni pizza as they are with us tonight. And uh, thank you so much to them for for, for supporting to, uh, this show and others here on the Sorgatron Media Podcast Day Tuesday. And you guys, and making you guys hungry on the live, live stream at live.sorgatronmedia.com. And, uh, and, and it's good stuff. And, 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 and they're uh, good people down here in Beachview along the tracks in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, as well as down in Carnegie, PA, if you survive that construction and get down there, uh, down on the main street in Carnegie, PA. And uh, and uh, they're they're good stuff, great ingredients, and they make me hungry every time. I almost want, ugh. We, we and we go there more than just the free pizza day, as we've discussed before with Chilla last week about how uh, he just grabs a stack of pizzas, basically a stack of pizzas and hoagies. Pizzas it's not and just, hoagies, it's just oh, not pizzas. Such good stuff. Even the salads, I've heard good things about the salads. But you know, if I'm there, I gotta go full on whole hog pizza. I so. wonder. I wonder if you can get the do button. And have it order you. Uh-huh. When you press the button, it orders you Slice on Broadway. There you go. There you go. Thanks to our friends, SliceOnBroadway.com. Tell them you heard about that, them on uh, Twitter, uh, PGH underscore Slice, or on Facebook or Instagram. Look for Slice on Broadway. So let's get into a couple of uh, apps and fun things online that we've been uh, looking at here. Uh, what is our app of the week? The app of the week is what did I put in there? Live photo. No. Oh, so yes, live photo. So one of the things that I was looking for, and I think we talked about it a couple weeks ago, with the launch of um, the iPhone 6s and live photos, is okay. Now, now I have this live photo. What am I going to do with it? Do I have to go back to a computer? How am I going to get it? I got to go back to a computer, take the MOV file, convert it, send it off to someone. Um, there's two um, entrepreneurs that have taken care of this issue for us. Um, one is LiveGIF, and the other one is Lively. Um, both cost $1.99. Um, they allow you to take your live photos and turn them into animated GIFs at hmm. the tap of a button. Um, the, 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 the Lively is free, um, but it, it does cost $1.99 and in an in-app purchase. I think you may get a free a handful of free trials to test it out. Um, and then live GIF is $1.99 on, off the bat. Um, to me, this definitely makes sense. Um, and you can set frame rates and speeds um, and then export it as a GIF. You can, uh, to me, this is the answer to all my problems personally with getting the, the video. I'm not, I'm not as worried about the sound in my, in my live photo as I am getting the animated GIF piece out of it. So I'm I'm am definitely excited to use this and then and then get get posting. There you go, a little bit something extra to uh, get into your live photos. Awesome, it's called Lively, L L I L Lively, basically. Um, live GIF. Wait, well, is there two apps? Yeah, there's two. Oh, there, two okay. there, that's what I was saying. There's two apps. Lively's free to download. Okay. But for unlimited exports, it's a dollar ninety nine. Okay. And then. Live GIF is a dollar ninety nine off the bat. They both pretty much do the same thing. You can kind of the good thing about Lively is if you want to try it, there's it's kind of a try before you buy. Um, be it in app purchase. Cool, go check it out. And uh, for me, I, you know, this was a uh, uh, something I haven't been able to dive too much into, but I was uh, listening to a new show. Uh, I, I I talked to Steve Peck over at, uh, and I, I'll tell you uh, real quick. 
what that show is. Um, I'm sorry, it's blanking on my head, uh, but I promise I give a plug. So uh, in the meantime, uh, but no, this was an app that was actually on his podcast that uh, a blogger actually talked about um, to to kind of make uh, uh, quick, you know, those quote cards that you that are you know infinitely shareable on mm-hmm. on everything. I'm, I'm I'm making some for a client and everything, and uh, this is called Canva. You can check out at canva.com, and uh, it's it's kind of just a quickie, uh, quickie design kind of thing. So I can actually go in here and I can create a design and so do an Instagram post, and it, it, you know, kind of like we talked about. Oh, now it's blanking on me. P- Pixlr in the past mm-hmm. that is basically Photoshop in a browser uh, uh, by Autodesk. And uh, again, you know, you can kind of go in here. It's got some designs kind of set up and it looks really slick. It's like, okay, hey, we got to do some Halloween stuff for our campaign coming up. Have a spooky Halloween. We can add it as a new post. We can go in here and change things. Have an awesome cast. uh, Let's see. Awesome. Uh Uh-oh, that didn't work. (laughs) Uh, Word wrap. Awesome Halloween. Have an awesome Halloween. And then we can go ahead and add that. We can add a new page to it. And so, yeah, the design's like really kind of uh, uh, easy. It, it's like a great design tool for this. Is like the over for your browser. It's for a browser, and I think they have an iPad. App. Do they have an iPad app? That yeah. that would make sense. And you can play around with this a little bit. I mean, it's it's a lot of kind of no brainer. We got stuff uh, uh, kind of started off for you, uh, kind of thing. And I think it's really nice and. This might be a go-to if I'm like, I gotta make a thing. I can't really go into Photoshop and 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 deal with it. Or if you don't have Photoshop, or if you don't have a lot of really kind of design shops, uh, this could kind of give you a nice head start. If you're like, oh snap, it 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 crashed my browser. Sad face folder. <laughs> Sad face folder. Where's the dinosaur? Oh, that's that's the that's the connection issues, isn't it? Yes. Um, but uh, but no no, it's uh, Canva.com, like canvas without the s. Uh, and I, I recommend you guys checking out if you're looking for something to do some quick design stuff. I sent it to the rest of my company because uh, I know we're like, oh, I got to make these designs now. Uh, some some people on the team. I was like, well, here you go. Now you can do this real quick and everything's OK. The podcast uh, in, in question, uh, local guy, uh, local guy against Steve Peck. Uh, Harness the web if you want to check that out. And again, talking about talking to people that are using blogs, social media, etc., uh, to to kind of uh, be their business. And I listened to a great one with uh, a woman that was uh, uh, blogging, uh, and she's a writer, a professional writer, and uh, lives in the Caribbean. I think she said. Uh, so like that kind of idea of just kind of working anywhere the heck you want to. So uh, that, that was that was pretty cool. Uh, so check that. Harness harness the web. It's on uh, iTunes and Stitcher if you want to check that out. So, um, so speaking of things, speaking of my team, we got to come in. I'm, I'm working on the website. I'm working on the website, Chilla. And, uh, you know how I love working on websites mm-hmm. these days, uh, especially on WordPress. But, uh, actually, you know, I'll give you guys a little bit of a preview if I can get logged in here real quick, if the thing will let me. Uh, so Sidekick Media Services is our, uh, little bitty company that we're starting here. A little spinoff here of Sorgatron Media for you guys looking for video services, help with your podcast. we work on educational services as well. Uh, so if, uh, we have some webinars and, uh, webinars and lunch and learns coming up here in the, uh, coming month, we're going to do some on, uh, uh, how to record your podcast. Uh, if you enjoy some of the stuff we're doing with basic ergonomics or, or enjoyed a lot of stuff that we did with uh, PodCamp Pittsburgh. This should be in your wheelhouse. You want to see a preview of the design? There you go. I know it's exciting, right? Nice. <laughs> so there's a little bit, uh, you know, just kind of filling things out for now and uh, getting with the team and working on that. Got to make a nice sizzle reel and all that kind of stuff. But you can pop in there, and we're we're gonna have a lot of kind of samples of our more professional work that we've done. Uh, so again, if you need help with uh, video production, I got a very exciting new project in the wings, a couple new projects in the wings. And, uh, and uh, you know, w- w- what can we do to help you tell your story, whether it be an ongoing podcast, ongoing series, or one-time video for uh, for corporate clients or whatever the case may be. You can check it out. Uh, SidekickMediaServices.com. Uh, not much there at the moment, but you can uh, follow us on social media and, uh, and hit us up on the contact page if there is anything you need help with. And we can help you tell your story. Uh, we were telling a lot of stories this past week, and you can find out more about that in this past week in Sorgatron Media. We'll be right back. Oh, dear. I don't mean to be indelicate, but uh, uh, 
do we have children to watch this show? Because I feel that perhaps they should not be watching this one. I'm here with a fellow podcaster, Buzzy Torek of the Epicast Network. If you just want to try a podcast, I'd say start doing them on your phone, get good at it. We have an, a popular podcast from Pittsburgh that is done all on an iPhone. Mm-hmm. I despise listening to it when I engineer it, but it, it it's there and people people don't don't seem to mind. Just record, record your conversations and start getting better at, at having those conversations. That is... Jay Briscoe. There is no hype. There is no hyperbole. But it was a Ring of Honor camp. He walked in. He was one of the coaches, and he had a stalk of raw broccoli in his hand, and he's taking chunks out of it as he's giving us instructions and telling us what to do and how to, uh, you know, where to be aggressive and where and just raw broccoli. And there was a part of me like, is he helping with me? Is is this? <laughs> um, I understood that that it was a business and that you were working for someone and that you were taking someone's ideas and um, influence and making it your own. And I believe that you have to be extremely patient. I've been extremely patient. Today. I didn't expect anything to be just handed over to me. I've wanted to work for it and I wanted to earn it. And it, it you know, I feel like if it's given to you, um, it's kind of, I don't know, it kind of depreciates it and devalues it. I'm probably not your typical use case. I'm at my desk when I'm working for work, which is low process or low memory intensive. I'm up here for the show. When I'm actually working on video, I'm usually on my couch. (laughs) (laughs) And and so like right now I'm plugged into this huge monitor, right? If I, if I were to edit video and and hit render or or save or whatever to, to actually render the video, I would grab the laptop and take it with me and open it up. Man, that was a great week last week. Check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. We're having a lot of fun with Sawtooth Willie and so much more. This week, Sawtooth Willie has a wardrobe change. I said Sawtooth, really weird. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, uh, Chilla, you you brought up a really interesting story uh, this week in the rundown that uh, I'm interested in as a as a, a former recovered glassaholic. So this is called. I'm guessing it's pronounced. Aura X, it's O R A dash X, and they're headphones that include a flippable AR display or augmented reality. Um, they debuted as a concept piece at CES last January, um, and it's essentially a wearable tablet. It does run Android KitKat, um, and it's capable of running standalone apps or streaming media from an, a Bluetooth enabled device, much like if you're obviously like your glass device. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, to me, and I don't remember the exact specs on the glass. Um, they say it's the equivalent of looking at a 70 inch display from 15 feet away. To me, a lot of this sounds almost identical to glass, you know, and the, it, it the also primary difference being, it sounds like it's running more of the full app. Mm-hmm. Um, how you're going to control it, I, I I find interesting. I don't know how. Maybe they're going to maybe the side of it's going to kind of work like a mouse. Um, but it, I'm pretty. It's kind of a cool concept, and I like the idea that the headphone like it has a nice nice headphones implemented or attached to it. Um, I don't I don't know if it'll catch on that. The AR slide piece that comes out looks a lot that that arm looks a lot larger. It does. I, I think that's going to kill your peripheral vision. But it, but it is interesting because they they show her holding it like this, where it's like over your eye, mm-hmm. which to which you know I think it would be a little bit of a problem. But then you see like this down here when they're showing DJ applications, right? And and it's actually below his vision, and this actually reminds me of we've seen some other concepts like this, or even the guys that were on that old uh, 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 night talk on PCNC from Carnegie that, mm-hmm. that they had one from like the early '90s that was like you know the idea was you could put it in any position that kind of worked for you, uh, and I, I kind of like that idea that it could become a uh, you know kind of depending on what you're doing. 
right? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it makes sense to put it down here. So I have that view here as I'm looking down at something up here. So it's out of my way while I'm driving, maybe, uh, which which I thought Google Glass is really good at. And, 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 and But it just, it just really didn't give you much choice beyond that uh, in that case. So, and this is also an Indiegogo. I love how much stuff we have. Uh, <laughs> let's see, raised by 63 people in seven hours. So this just started out today. I, I don't that part I don't know I saw it it came through a headline on connectedly right so it said 35 days left and there is a Kickstarter video here as well so we can show off the device a little bit more with them uh, they they have raised uh, 23,000 already uh, of the $150,000 goal uh, did, did you see uh, well, wow and that does look it's it's Android dude <laughs> look it, at no, this. it's definitely it's definitely Android it's Android powered but it's not covered up at all it's just like no nah, this is Android yeah you know and it's like it's got a little bit going on there, and uh, they they have these wonderful uh, 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 concept videos where you know we had some great concept videos back with Google Glass. It just was never realized. Uh, but, but again, that that same idea that it's like this screen that's like out in front of you, right? Which which I thought it was Google Glass was that, and I thought they were really good at that. And um, but but the imitators are going to be very interesting. The, and what what I really like, it's still going back to one of the, the points I made earlier, was the thing I really like about it is it runs on its own. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be connected to, you don't have to be connected to a phone. Right. It's running, the the, the headphones themselves are running Android. Um, so now who knows, will they get... What is this uh, San Francisco 49ers uh, all-time pro running back? featured on here for some reason <laughs> is he a backer or something? he's a backer i guess it's like this is what i do with my nfl money <laughs> what's up so i make people look goofy on the streets of san francisco i'm sure you know san francisco there's gotta be all kinds of people like this with just goofy crap on their heads that they're testing out from indiegogo right mm-hmm. uh, or something like that but uh but no i know I, I think this is you're gonna you're i think you're gonna see several iterations like this um like we i mean we're seeing there's even when when glass first started coming out right uh there were the glasses versions you know and, and everything and i think uh you're going to see this iterate iterate until uh you get your uh, apple glass comes out eventually <laughs> <laughs> or or google glass uh, 5.0 because we didn't hear about all the other ones and uh it, i don't know it, it's 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 coming like i to, think we're going to have these but to me this is the precursor to the hollow lens i love how we went bigger though didn't we with this thing with this this thing so this thing's bigger than glass right and if you mm-hmm. look at the hollow lens the hollow lens is right now like this wrap around well, it's almost like what we were looking at with the oculus gear vr yeah but the difference being is this is augmented reality and i think that's the true future to virtual reality i think they're right i think there's going to be a certain segment of the population that enjoys the lose your sense of being in a physical space and jump into virtual reality Mm -hmm. versus I really think there's the masses or the, the AR or the augmented reality is what's really going to appeal to the masses. Mm -hmm. I I was listening to, I can't remember what podcast it was, but they were talking about using the gear VR and some of the videos and how it completely distorts your spatial relationships and it does mess a little more with with your emotion and your mind right right because um, you're, you're accepting of everything happening around you yeah so whereas this is kind of an overlay of information or if i want to play with legos or or what some kind of augmented reality minecraft um, i can do that but i it's sitting on your table over there mm-hmm. it's not something that I can't see everything in the room. And that's, that's still something that I've been playing. I've been still playing with the, with the, the gear VR, but putting me in that setting where I have to sit in a chair and make sure that nothing is around me. So when I swivel around, there's room for me. It's, it's just a different, different, Mm -hmm. definitely different atmosphere. You can still get the early bird on this for $350 plus shipping uh, expected in May, 2016. And uh, you can get up to uh, let's see. I think it's I think five hundred dollars is going to be your general cost for this thing. It's still over half the price. Yeah, it's still like less, less about about a no. That is a third <laughs> of what you would have paid for Google Glass. 
So what I did pay for Google Glass. And man, do I have this Pebble Watch to show for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, this, and this iPad 3, and which I do get a lot of use out of still. So it worked out really well for me. So and, you, and of course you're getting use out of the glass as mm-hmm. well. So uh, that that worked out for everybody. Got to share the love. Uh, what else is going on? Hey Microsoft, leave my apps alone. Uh, there was apparently uh, this is I think if I recall this was uh, the story out of Engadget. I read this a little bit ago. Uh, was talking about I think this is one of the uh, uh, preview builds of Windows 10 coming down the pike. And uh, apparently, yeah, it's a leaked Windows 10 preview release, and it gives you a prompt whenever you're trying to switch away from default Microsoft apps, such as the Edge browser. You're (laughs) asked, according to Engadget, to give that stock app a shot, quote. (laughs) And the most prominent option is to stick with the Microsoft option. Not exactly subtle. It's not certain if this is going to go all the way through the preview preview program, but it's evident that the company is at least toying with the idea. So, uh, considering, as they mentioned in the article, uh, do you know anybody that doesn't immediately install the Chrome or Firefox browser when they install Windows on anything? Uh, that's a very curious thing. You know, I, in, in a similar vein, every time I have to update uh, uh, Mac OS X, I get the, have you tried the new features in Safari? Because no one uses Safari? I'm I, I'm back. I've left. I, I'm leaving Chrome again. Oh no! I, so I left. I left Firefox to go to Chrome, mm-hmm. and now I'm. And now that ha- actually, it's all about Hangouts, right? Now that Hangouts is fully cross-browser capable, no plugin, no nothing. I'm actually back to. I, I've I've got, I've jumped jumped past Firefox back to Safari, and it's pri- it's primarily because a the share sheet. And B, the um, bookmarking. That's my primary drivers. Man, that's great. But you know, what about when you switch back to Chrome? Is it importable? Like, will my bookmarks are there pretty easy tools to say? Oh, I want to go to Safari, take all my bookmarks over here, and find me comparable uh, plugins. I guess. I. Are there extensions? There are extensions, and so I don't use that that many, and I wasn't using that that many in Chrome. I did have a, I did have a, I did have a small number, um, but the main things I want are like the Twitter, the Facebook, the the Pocket, um, so that's where that's my primary use cases. I gotta say, uh, I got a little problem here, Chilla, because I got <laughs> I got uh, probably a little. I don't know if you can see these, but I got a little too many. Uh, Oh, geez, I got like 10 of them up here. Yeah, you do have, <laughs> I have a lot going on, and I wonder why it's slow to build. Listen, I have to have my Giphy quick access toolbar here for Chrome that still doesn't load, so I can get my GIFs on whenever the heck I want to, or uh, or my two pop-up blockers, <laughs> or, or why do I have a Meerkat? thing i'm gonna remove this right here actually <laughs> so while we're at it wow like i don't even know what's up there anymore well that's where i feel like i i try something and then i never shut it off mm-hmm. so it's it's one of those things where do i really need all that cruft i would rather have a... i just identified like three of these that i can <laughs> remove by the way like there's an extension manager uh there's a, a signature manager over because inbox didn't have a uh, uh, signatures in there for the longest time uh, inbox throws me because it doesn't show me the signature before it sends. Oh, and I think there's a, there's a lot of different things, different apps like that. I have a couple apps like that on my phone where you set your signature and then it never, it never shows you when you set an email. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I'm wondering back to, back to the whole thing of Microsoft wanting you to stick with the default. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was the point of what we were talking <laughs> about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering, does this have to do with Cortana having access. Ooh, by the way, I apparently activated Cortana on this Windows 10 laptop, and now I have all these results in Bing for SoCal Pizza. <laughs> so I don't know if they're trying to creep into our sponsor over here. Uh, so it got really interesting. <laughs> but anyways, I'm sorry. Yeah, because I, you know, kind of like you can't use non-Apple things for Siri to work correctly with them, right? Well, but that's what they're changing, right? Because right. now so Siri's based off of the searchability of the device and i know google is talking about um google's talking about the google app on ios is going to be the search results from the google app are going to be searchable in spotlight Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. So then Siri can interact, kind of interact with those those results. Okay, is that that's the next phase of our game, isn't it? I right. mean, as it is, you have on Android the uh, what do they call it? On tap. On tap, right? That that is uh, uh, giving you context based on what is happening in the application. So it, it so Google is reading what is happening in an application that is not a Google application. Granted, the application does give it permission, and you gave it permission probably by uh, tapping accept on something uh, somewhere along the line, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, still, it's a very interesting, not an issue per se, but uh, it's just a very interesting thing that happens, doesn't it? The thing I like, the thing I'll be interested to see of how different companies handle it, I know Apple has claimed, and I think Microsoft has claimed, it never leaves the device. Right. So... The one thing I really like about the Apple or the Apple ones or the Apple suggestions is if I'm at home and I pick up my iPad, I'm very apt to and it's and it's after 7 p.m. at night. I'm very apt to launch Marvel Champions and play a couple rounds, mm-hmm. but I would never do that on my phone. And I'm glad that it keeps it per device because it's not like my phone's trying to say, you should play Marvel right now because I would never want to play Marvel on the smaller screen. I would always want to go over and grab my iPad, but my, my phone has suggestions like hit the app store, go to messages, use this email app. Um, here's some news that you might be interested in. So that's, that's where I'm really happy about it being per device. And I've heard Cortana is the same way. What I'm hoping Google doesn't do is, Hey, you did this over on this device. Maybe you want to do it on this device too, or this other oh. device too. But then sometimes, but still, I, I think there needs to be a little bit of learning in general because I, it needs to learn from that. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, some things, oh yeah, I'd like to do X task no matter what screen is in front of me, right? Mm-hmm. But then you're but right. It should, it'll, you, it'll, you it'll pick that up. I'm right, just right, hoping right. Google doesn't, Google tries to take kind of take it sometimes to that nth degree. And I'm worried they're going to try to start pushing things. It just wants to be helpful, man. Yeah. Well, yeah I understand listen, you're trying to be helpful. The big Goog wants to help you out in your day-to-day <laughs> life, okay? The big Goog is looking out for you, okay? And watching you. And, and, and reading your emails. And reading your emails. <laughs> and knows exactly where you are. And and knows if you're going to be late for a flight. Knows if you're going to be late for a flight. <laughs> Let's me know I should leave on time for this thing that I already arrived at. Wait till ONTAP like starts rebooking your flight. <laughs> we know you're not going to make it to the airport. We we've booked the next flight. We've seen of- the traffic. <laughs> just get up. Just 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 stay home. Uh, uh, get get a few more Z's. Don't worry. Uh, just just show up in another five hours. We know there was a bad snow last. This would be great. We know there was a bad snow last night, and, and the there's traffic- a seventy five percent chance that when there's a bad snow like this, that this this means the traffic will be like this, the planes will be like this. So we shut off your alarms. So we've shut off your alarms. <laughs> don't bother waking up. Don't, don't bother. Don't worry. We got this. The big goog is looking out for you. We got this. We let you sleep in. We let you sleep in. Why were you late? Uh, Google decided I needed to sleep in. Uh, Google said so, and that'll be an acceptable <laughs> excuse. Because, hey, it's happening to all of us. The big Goog is watching out for you. We saw uh, you were up late listening to Pandora <laughs> and watching Netflix. Is that what we're doing? Binge watching Netflix. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> we, we decided we decided that we're you need to sleep in. You, you need to get like, enough sleep. Like, listen, listen, this is a mindfulness <laughs> thing. We know how important sleep is. Because we're the Google and we look out for you, and and we have a search result that tells us exactly how 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 much sleep you should be getting, <laughs> and 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 everything, and 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 uh, and your Fitbit has been telling us that uh, you're very stressed out, and not sleeping well, and uh, oh yeah, yeah, that could be fun. We've turned we've turned your <laughs> Nest thermostat up real warm, so you're all kinds of comfy, and. Uh, <laughs> We've locked you in your house. Like, and, and we locked your dog out in the cold so it doesn't bother you. <laughs> Anyways. Um, and I wish I didn't pick the next story to be about Google uh, after that. Google offers aggressive incentives to win Microsoft Office customers. Oh, I heard about this. Wait, yeah. I, did, I did hear about this today. Yeah, so I, I, I put this in and I put in the Forbes article. And this was the first article I saw last night. Okay. Um, I know... There's been I've I've seen a slew of of these articles over mm-hmm. over the last 24 hours. Um, pretty much, it 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 talks about um, Microsoft's rise 
of over 300% in utilization of Office 365, mm -hmm. um, while Google has not increased their their usage as much. And we're the, talking about Google Apps, like the paid Google Apps enterprise, like like we're talking about like Docs, Sheets, right, 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 right for the like, enterprise. Like for those who don't know, like like the, okay, my experiment experience with this has been uh, when I was doing teaching, adjunct teaching of our PTI, all the students had Google Gmail email addresses that were pti.edu mm -hmm. so that that that's the kind of thing we're talking about here right by the way teaching staff got outlook online for some reason <laughs> yeah okay. price price difference i don't right? know I, that... I integrated maybe or maybe since since i think it's easier to turn over a new crop of students every so often than the longtime teaching staff that mm -hmm. just knows office because i understand that too because like missy hi uh, she's used to office. She's in an office based office environment. Yeah. Um, see, it's synonymous. So, so that's the environment she operates in. And we were having a discussion about how she was using outlook for, for calendaring and everything and how that just makes sense with her thing. You know, versus me, I've, you know, I know Google, I know Google calendar. I haven't had to be subjected to that. So I've, I found other options. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think Google has an uphill climb and Office by just kind of converting people that are already, you know, pretty well into Office because all they're doing is capturing all those people that needed to upgrade really, really bad. Right? Yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see how this plays out. And, I, and it, it, I'm looking at it in two different directions. And it goes back to actually a conversation that we had on probably one of the first awesome casts that I was on, and we were talking about how Adobe really grabbed its foothold in the enterprise. And it was all about, they went after the colleges and the PTIs and they gave away their products for free. Right. Then when those, when those people came into the workforce, that's the tool set they knew. Which is the same thing we see going on with Google right now, is there... I'm seeing more and more elementary schools, middle schools, high schools using not necessarily Android, but using Chromebooks, which is what really surprised me about the last Pixel announcement. It was running Android. It wasn't running Chrome OS. But if you start getting all of these students on those platforms and you can get a minimal amount of companies, I almost feel like it's a differentiator for the company, right? Mm -hmm. Come work for us. It's going to be easier. Um, wait, wait, because because they have the Google apps. Yes. Really? Do you? Okay. Okay. For us. Ooh, you have. Ooh, you have Gmail based email. Ooh, I don't have to work on Outlook. Ooh, I don't but, have to but do this. this. No, so now here's the interesting thing, though. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that, and and I think Microsoft's worried about this too, because one of the things that came into Office 2016 is app mentions. And plus ones in Outlook. What? Yeah. So they're trying to make their they're trying Outlook and, and Microsoft is trying to make their mail social because they realize there's an issue with mail and response and content and sharing things that Google does really, really well and search things that Google does really well. So they're starting to try to integrate. So think about it, right? Instead of. Me send, So I send an email to 15 people and say, give me your let me know what you think about this. Mm -hmm. Instead of me getting 15 emails back saying, I agree, I agree, I agree. It's I agree. a thread. It's a, it's a but it's it's no, it's this, it's my email with a bunch of plus ones on it from everyone. And I can see who wow. agreed through the plus ones. And this is this is but this is presuming everybody's on Outlook basically this is, in the company. Right. So well, this which, is, so most this, companies aren't going to be running two platforms. No, 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 no. But it is is it is not going to be uh for inter office. It, it's more like kind of how you think of Slack, right? Yes. Where and that's it, this is just inner office communication basically. Right. Uh, this is this is our chat system. This is our internal Facebook, our internal message board. And in, in, a, in a way, it is competing, obviously, by that with Facebook because Facebook's trying to do their own office thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but this is this is what Google does inherently well. And I think they're one of the things that they brought up to in this article was one of the things that's keeping people from moving is obviously 
depending on time of year and depending on their existing agreements, you know, we still have eight months left on our on our office subscription. So now Google saying, well, guess what? We'll let you use Google, the Google for work platform mm-hmm. for free until your office subscription is up. And once it's up, we'll give you up to twenty five dollars per user to help you migrate your data over. Because obviously you got all these companies with crazy Excel spreadsheets and and all kinds of um, formulas in those. So you, you, spreadsheets. you need support to figure out. Okay, I did this. I I did X function here. How do I do it in your thing? It's right. not that one is more capable than the other. It's just I know how to do it. I know where all the buttons are here. Because especially day to day office work, you're a creature of habit, right? Mm-hmm. He was like, I have the way I do things that work for me. Boom, boom, boom. You upset that. You just upset work. Well, and, and I look at it, that's the same. I look at people, too. I see more and more people are creating templates or they're taking things they did the last time and taking they're, they're taking that PowerPoint, right? And they're opening up the last PowerPoint they built and swapping out text and they're swapping out content. Or they're taking that Excel spreadsheet that had a bunch of formulas in it and just dropping in new data. So if you can get what's going to happen is all those students coming out of Google type colleges that are, that are using all this, all their templates are going to be based in Google. Mm -hmm. So either all the students are going to have to relearn and figure out all the office packages or the companies are going to have, or the companies are going to start to switch. And it's, it's, I'm sure it's going to be just based on price personally. Um, But I'm interested to see, I mean, Google's, this is the first time I've seen Google fight, necessarily financially for corporate for corporate for corporate and, and by the way I, i'm determining we really do need to get uh missy and kraus in here at the same time to just throw down over office because i had a good conversation with her about because she was trying you know she has the office subscription and and i was like well, well what about on how's it working on your iphone you know and how she likes outlook and everything and, and i was like i thought it was really interesting and i'd like to see them just kind of uh fill us in on it as people that use this because we yeah i i we you have you probably have office in your day job environment right uh chilla yeah we 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 are a we're a microsoft office right right shop. so 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 again you were you know and for me it's just like oh, office <laughs> well and here's here's the funny part is is that i started using keynote and mm-hmm. keynote has all is a is a lot better than powerpoint in my mind from a transition from a presentation engine, the Keynote has to me way more capabilities than PowerPoint, and I now do a lot of PowerPoint for work. Um, that being said, I do understand. You know, I feel like Excel is is 180 degrees from numbers. Um, so it all depends on I think what you're what you're looking to get done. Um, but I, I don't I, I could think I could adapt somewhat to other platforms and be kind of platform agnostic when it comes to those tools. I know there's people and we've 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 opened up this kind of comment in on a Facebook thread, I think, before where people are like, there's no way I could ever leave office because of all of my formulas and Excel spreadsheets. So, um, Chilla, I got to be honest, I've been distracted for the last like three minutes on. Oh, um, if this than that, I open it up on the iPad. <laughs> um, I have now set up that I will get a notification every time the International Space Station is overhead of Pittsburgh. Ah. I will also get a notification when an astronaut enters space. And now I am adding a regular email of NASA's picture of the day directly to my inbox. Boop. And that's now going to happen. Um, you, should, you should set it up every you, you want a notification every time someone leaves office for Google Google Docs. <laughs> sure <laughs> email a daily digest of top apps gone free on the apple app store yes oh no i'm gonna have so many emails i just unsubscribed from so many things <laughs> and now i'm gonna have this <laughs> okay well oh well, we'll see how this goes in the morning i'm gonna forget about like why do i have all these emails oh if i look at so for me word eh there's there's not there's no thank you for bringing it back around to the topic at hand by the way sorry 
for for word there's nothing that's that's sticky for me for word i can i can use heck i use notepad other than everybody else uses it uh yeah basically so but but i i, I think the presentation engine and the the spreadsheet engine are, are are the sticking point for a lot of users and and i'm guessing if you got missy and kraus in here they would just say, Throw down. It's going to be Microsoft Office. It's Throw down. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're going to be all for Office. Mm. It's what mm. they use every day. Mm -hmm. They're resistant to change. That's the, that's the noise for that. <laughs> all right. Well, on that point, Chilla, it's been a lot of fun uh, hanging out with you and talking tech and eating pizza from our friends. <sighs> eating pizza probably. is my favorite part. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I like the pizza. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how we get them to come back. That's how we get it. But we, we got some stuff coming up next week do we what's happening I know on monday on monday, monday the apple tv goes on sale go buy apple tvs i'm 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 actually gonna go i'm gonna actually build out my if this then that and that's the page i'm gonna monitor <laughs> there you go what else is happening what else is happening there was some microsoft's doing something i think halloween's next week something. halloween tech is there halloween tech maybe we should have a special episode next week are we gonna dress up we should. We, we should. <laughs> we should. We should have a Halloween night. Everybody dresses up. Oh, man. Okay. All right. We're going to have to make this happen. Make a note. Make a note. Everybody dress up in the chat room. Make sure you dress up, too. That's right. And uh, we're going to have a Halloween episode. I always forget about it. It's like, oh, Halloween's like this weekend. We should have done something today. Um, <laughs> back to the Future Day is tomorrow. Back to the Future Day is tomorrow. Got to attend the great Carnegie Science Center uh, over 21 night. Uh, that was okay. I don't know if you've been there for a while. I didn't realize the entire top floor is now basically a playground. Um, and they I just did not let, know that either. And they just let the, let the adults go. Uh, there's a wonderful video that I did. I posted. I didn't post it anywhere. But there's these, these blue kind of shapes and blocks that you can build stuff with. And they were building a giant tower to the point where they were building steps to put more things on the tower. As they were going, and it was pretty freaky, and everybody was just gathered around watching them build stuff. Hmm. That was pretty good. It was very geeky, very awesome, and there's alcohol involved. Like they bring in, they sell, they sell beer on each floor, and they they have some looks like some pretty good food that you can buy. Uh, and uh, and everything was uh, Back to the Future themed, like the planetarium that I had never been in before, and uh, and the uh, the works, the science was about uh, what what technology from Back to the Future is is here yet, you know. Not hoverboards. Not hoverboards, but something very close to it. And they actually talk about, she actually, she actually talked about the science behind the hoverboards that are here. So, she touched on a lot of that stuff. And energy, a lot of, a lot of talk about energy, of course. So, uh, so check that out. Check out everything else. We got a lot of great interviews over at awesomecast.net. Like I said, talking with our friends from iBoard, our friends from PCTV21 about that. How does public television and YouTube intersect? You'll find that out later this week on awesomecast.net, on our YouTube channel, on our Twitter, on our iTunes, on our speakers, Spetitcher, iHeartRadio, all kinds of different places. I need if this, then that, this exit, basically. And uh, thank you again to our awesome Patreons and everybody else. Uh, thank you to our awesome chat room here. Joining us at live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday night around 5, no, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time is when we're getting uh, queued up, and maybe we have something playing, or uh, and we get going uh, somewhere within the half hour here. Ooh, if rain tomorrow, get an if notification. Done. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, we talk about if this, then that, some cool apps and an alarm clock that I probably won't destroy. And Windows 10 is getting really pushy, and Office is kind of uh, getting uh, pushed around by Google. The big goob. Is... Fuck. That was so close. Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, the big Goog is looking out for you as we talk about if this, then that. Google looking out for you. I just repeated that. This week on Awesome Cast, the big Goog is looking out for you. We talk about them. 
pushing around uh, some Office subscribers. Windows 10 getting pushy with their apps. If this, then that. An alarm clock I probably won't destroy. And so much more. Awesome cast.